less wrinkles at this age. <laughs> we have to talk about gloss while we're talking about ah, limited editions. Yes. Um, many of you will remember the iconic 60s, uh, sorry, 60s, 80s um, uh, soap opera, ba which is very similar. I suppose it's New Zealand Dynasty. Or yes, yeah. Dallas. Um, so yeah, yeah. It was in those days. Yeah. It was on at the same time. Yeah, yes. about a magazine empire, and it was very. Uh, it was a very interesting series in many ways because it used contemporary designers such as yes. yourself, and mm -hmm. and they were commissioned by um, Liz Mitchell, another mm -hmm. designer, and Enid, Enid Erickson. Erickson. Yes. yes, and I think we've got a letter reproduced some some here talking about Trilisa's a successful year designing clothes for for a, one of the characters? Or um, I used to do for Ma Maxine Redfern, who was Alona Rogers, and Maxine was the um, editor of the magazine Gloss. It was a fashion magazine. So everything that happened around it happened, uh, but in great dramatic style. There was big hats and big belts and big collars. and, <laughs> and um, But I would also address um, Kerry Smith, and she was Magda... Magda, mm. anyway, she had a name, mm. Magda something, yes. her character. And um, also um, Maggie Eyre. Um, Maggie Eyre yeah. had a character as well, and sometimes I would dress her. But Liz Mitchell would come with Enid Erickson most weeks, and they would run through with me what the, what the script was and the idea that they wanted behind the garments that they were going to show on the show and um, I loved it. I loved the sort of like theatrical because another part of I guess forming my um, who I am and as a designer and what I like is that I played in musicals um, as a teenager, young teenager from about 12 through to 22 I sang on stage and I was in musicals and they were always very um, dressed, I mean, I loved anything that looked like an Austrian blind, you know, mm. <laughs> sort of mm. I loved those bits, and I loved being down in the um, wardrobe department under the stage and going through all the things, and they'd get donated pieces, and then the wardrobe mistresses would also make pieces, but, you know, the things, and I'd get in there and look at all these lovely ribbons and things that actually weren't around in any sort of clothing and uh, you know that I came into contact with so a part of it was that so once I was doing that with Enid and Liz I loved all of that side of it and um, but again it was under a lot of pressure mm. um, you know there was time pressures I think that's the thing about fashion that people who aren't in it don't get it's all about time it's all about the next mm. collection and mm. <laughs> doing everything to a time so it's a time pressure which is probably why we am rushing. Well, something <laughs> really interesting that, that could be looked at is the actual influence of this, these contemporary clothes on uh, how it's an impact on the dri you know, how New Zealand is dressed at that time. Yes, it's, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I don't want to credit myself with <laughs> any of that, but I do think as a result of, um, I don't know, opening up the way in which people view clothing, I think other designer, um, you know, other clothing brands looked at mm, it and mm. um, more mass market brands started to adopt some of it. Mm. And um, and people, I, you know, we always used to say that we would have women come in who have always, had always dressed in black and we're just going to try one piece and then, you know, we'd say we only need two pieces and we have them addicted. And I don't know, it's something about colour or something about having a bit more detail that attracts people and, and women always, when I meet them, say, I just get so many lovely comments when I wear your clothes. So, mm. um, yeah. It's and, uh, the, of course, the, the fabrics that you used during, um, for, during the 80s uh, as well today, they're, they're a real, they were a real success, a uh, real factor, in, I think, in the success mm. of your garments. The quality was astonishing. And maybe tell us a bit about sourcing your fabrics then, because yeah. you went to oh. yeah. Italy, didn't you? I did. There used to be um, fairs in Italy. I, I mean, they probably still run, but I don't go to them anymore. Um, but they were amazing, these wonderful fashion um, textile fairs. And I don't know, I just, 
I sort of just rocked up to these things. I didn't know anyone else that had done it. I, didn't, I don't know how I ended up there. I don't know what decision. I probably would say today I was brave, but actually I was just ignorant. <laughs> and I managed to get there. Um, and I would just go to these fairs and convince these people to send me their 50 metres of sampling. And, you know, of course, that would be my bowl quarter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would be in the same places that the Jean-Paul Gaultier team, back in those days, I mean, he was a big fashion star. And, you know, I'd be with them and they would be buying, you know, and they'd all have wonderful black suits on and skinny, skinny boys and good looking and their black hair back in ponytails. It was sort of so black, it was blue. And they just had this look about them. And you just, oh, I'd walk behind them and go, wow, that's so cool. And I would, you know, go into the stand at the mm. same time or after them. And, oh, you know, the fabrics were really delicious. They were wonderful. Mm. And because in those days I didn't have... Oh, that's why I don't go now. I've just realised. <laughs> I think someone could afford it if I went there now. Um, in those days, I just had one markup. It was from my design room into the retail store. Now I wholesale my garments, so there's two markups. You know, it's from my, uh, you know, I well, not two markups, but it's how everybody works. But before, it just used to be I could offer these wonderful, beautiful fabrics. Um, and I still spent a lot of money on fabrics, don't get me wrong, but these were really expensive. I used to even buy at those fairs hand-woven um, wool from Ireland, mm. um, you know, that they would, like I would make... and things. Yes, yeah, yeah. beautiful coats yeah, out of, I mean, heavy. Mm. We couldn't wear them today, or not in Auckland anyway. These very, very heavy coats. And um, so I would go to those fairs and I could, and... Um, mm. It was amazing fabric, beautiful fabric. Solbiati linens, who I deal with now through my interiors, wonderful ways of putting stripes and colours. And I guess it was another avenue of opening me up to uh, the rest of the world and the way they put colour together. You mm. know, colour in Europe is worn in a whole different way to it, the way it is um, down under. Maybe not so different now, but um, now that the world has opened up, but Definitely, you know, mm. if I think about men in Europe, they, they're quite comfortable wearing a pale yellow pair of, um, you know, pants yeah. and, a, and a pink a pink um, top yeah. and a, maybe think a... Think about that, pe the label pink in London. Yes, and shirts, yeah. Beautiful yeah. shirts, colours and... Uh, yeah, and the way they just put all these colours and that's the men, not the girls. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, the girls do too, but... Yeah. Yeah.